Let's pray together. Father, we just want to thank you this morning for your word. We want to thank you for spiritual circumcision. Lord. We want to thank you for God allowing us to be exposed to even what you are saying to us. We thank you, Lord God, for showing us, you know, the fact of natural circumcision as just a shadow of what you were about to do in the New Testament. And now we are living in that reality. Father, we thank you, God Almighty, for each and every one of our brothers and sisters inside of Christ. Many may not even know this reality. Many may be stuck in a particular place. They know a part of this morning. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ at this time, wherever it is, um, the time across the world, that Lord God Almighty, your word will come with such a power and such an, an effect upon the hearts of people in the name of Jesus Christ that will move people from wherever spiritual location that they are. Some would have decided that this is where they are going to stay this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, that the word of the Lord goes forth. God Almighty, that people have to move. God, there's a song I remember yesterday. You got to move when God gets ready. And Lord God, you are right now standing. You are ready knocking on somebody's heart and say, it is now time to move. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we agree with you right now. For that individual, Lord, for movement to take place in the name of movement in a positive direction. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that persons who would have been offended and decided that they are not moving this morning. Hallelujah. Every blockage now, God Almighty, is being moved in the name of Jesus Christ. And let the love flow. God Almighty, somebody is stuck in a place and they have, you know, in Jamaica we say bad blood against people. And Lord God, don't even realize that that is destroying the very thing, the gift that you have given to them. They are, they are like self-destruction going on. They have chosen to, 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 to lock down what it is that the flow that you have designed for them. But this morning, God, repentance is coming for it. In the name of Jesus, we say repentance. Hallelujah. We say, God Almighty, the flow of the Lord is taking place right now. There is not a if, but, nor, maybe. God, there's a decision being made in our heart right now. Somebody is seeing that they have been stopping themselves. That is nothing, this is not even any devil coming to do this against them, but they themselves, they have stopped themselves from growing. Father, hallelujah. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for that revelation. We thank you, God Almighty, for your power that that person can decide right now to say, I let it go. I let it go. Yes, they hurt me. Yes, they are doing this against me. But I see you in the midst of the situation. <laughs> and that's all I need to know. And so, Lord, we thank you for your liberation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, I'm just so excited. Well, you know, prayer is just a way of communicating to the Lord and fellowship with Him. And when God started us, you know, move and just show you even what, he, you know, He's doing in people's heart. You have to just believe and just go with the Lord. So we have been looking at spiritual circumcision. And I just want to just take things a little bit more and to go, you know, as, and write with the message. And we have been looking at that. And Pastor Andrew laid a a clear foundation, but some of you may have not been here and may have not even gotten a chance to really even go and to look at what this thing is. So I'm going to bring that to our attention this morning. Hallelujah. So we looked at the spiritual circumcision and as you would have heard in the reflection that in the nuggets, this is the part where in God would have made a covenant with Abraham. Let's go there. So it's the Abrahamic covenant, and it's this dispensation that is called the dispensation of promise. Whoa, somebody needs a promise this morning. Has anybody ever made a promise to you? I know it's Christmas time coming up, you know. I'm first I said, ah, I'm looking for so many things. We're looking for gifts. But I'm telling you, God has made a promise. Hallelujah. Ah, I'm telling you, and this promise beat out any other promise that anybody else can make to you. And so God started with Abraham. And Abraham was a man in a situation of idolatry. So there's somebody right now is saying, but I don't know about this God that they're talking about. I am from a particular type of family. We, you know, worship 
at certain idols and you are making an excuse right now. The word is coming to you, you know, and you're making an excuse. I'm telling you, there was a man called Abraham. His life, his whole history was a mess. His whole history was a mess. And so he was in idolatry. And this continued to the lives, you know, the whole dispatch to the lives of the patriarch and ended in accidents with the Jewish people and Egypt. And so we're going to, I just want us to see the history and appreciate the history because many times, even in the New Testament, we look and we say, oh, yes, we are circumcised and we're just moving along. But it is so good to know where, you know, we're coming from and to know, how, to see the, the perfect design of the Lord for our lives. And so the patriarchs in the dispensation of promise were Abraham. When you talk about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, whose name was changed. My God, whoa, I'm telling you, this is so powerful that when many of us, we come into the Lord, God, we have a name. I don't even want to go into that right now. But I'm telling you that the name, Jacob, that encounter that you have, somebody knew you as a rebel. When you were in sin, but you have come into the Lord and they know he has grace. Hallelujah. Many persons, if you look on their lives right now, they are nothing compared to who they were. They were, they were vile. They were violent. Come on. I know you hear a name like Saul and Paul. This man, every time I look on this thing, I say, God, only you could do this. This man started to do the exact opposite of what he was doing. He was killing people, bringing death to people. And when you stopped him on his way, you just literally, he didn't invite you. You decided to have an encounter with him. You decided to set an appointment with him. I tell you right now, Lord, I thank you for setting some appointment with people. In the name, they don't even know it. They didn't know that this day, this day hearing me was an appointment that they have with you and they can't shake it. They can't hide from it. They're going to encounter you and a transformation, the transformation that they need deep down will take place. Hallelujah. And so Jacob's name changed to Israel and Israel had 12 sons and chief of who were Joseph and Judah. Hallelujah. So multiple generations followed and ended at Exodus. And we see during this dispensation of the promise that God developed a great nation. A great nation that he had chosen as his people to be that separated people through whom the promise of the Messiah would come. And we can look at Genesis 2, 1. We can look at Exodus 19, 25, and so forth. And so the basic thing that we want to say here, the basic promise during the dispensation of promise was that Abrahamic covenant. I want us to know that, that Abrahamic covenant, a covenant is a, a binding, it's, it's even more than a binding contract. I'm telling you, it's a deep contract. It's a, it's a, it's a very significant contract that is made between two parties. Are more than one parties, but here are some key points that I want us to note of that unconditional covenant. Hallelujah. I just feel like to praise the Lord right here, right now. I just want somebody, you are listening and you're seeing already that God has made a promise. Some, somebody is here that that promise was even made through your generations. You know, your, your, your grandmother, your grandfather, your, 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 your dad, your mom, and they would have prayed about you. They would have made a, a promise to the Lord. And you are included in that, but you have not fully come into that. And this morning is, a, is that moment, is that point wherein you suddenly feel your heart. Hallelujah. You feel the pricking and the Lord is saying, this is it. You are, you are even jumping right now and rejoice and say, this is it. You don't even know what it is, you know, all of it, you know, but you just know, say, this is it. This is the moment. I want to stop right now. I want to cry out to the Lord because indeed the change is happening. Hallelujah. So from Abraham would come a great nation that God would bless with natural and spiritual spiritual prosperity natural and spiritual prosperity god would also make 
Abraham's name great. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, is there somebody right now you're thinking about all of the, the things that you are you're thinking about? I you know by under God that God has said some things to you. I want you to believe the Lord. God would bless those that blessed Abraham descendants and curse those who curse them. God has made a promise and this covenant stands that we have to go there. And so the fourth thing that we want to look at is that Abraham, all the families of the earth, in Abraham, all the families of the earth will be blessed. There's somebody who you know, all of your life you have heard about just curses and different things. I'm telling you this morning, you have come to the right place. You have, you have stopped at the right, stop right here. So because I'm telling you that God's a plan for your life. And that plan is greater than anything else anybody would have said to you. Any negative word anybody else would have said to you. Somebody is feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling that there's a fire of the Lord is here. I'm telling you, and where you are, you are feeling that. And you know that all of the, 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 the different things that have been happening to you has ended right now. Right now. And that has ended because of a decision. You would have been wrapped up your mind. You have been walking in fear of death. I, I, I just want to pause here. I know we have not reached in the message, but I have to follow the Holy Spirit because I grew up that way. I grew up around church, but there was just a fear of death. A fear that, hey, if man, I'm telling you, Pastor Andrew preached about it last week and we're going to touch a little bit on that. But you grew up and you know that if somebody carried near my son, this and that, you know, the Jamaican context and in other countries, you have other types of things that happen. You will be there trembling and just waiting until death comes. Come on. But this morning I'm saying that's not so. Hallelujah. And so Abraham said all of the families of the earth will be blessed. And this is the fulfilled, is fulfilled in Christ, Jesus Christ, and his work of salvation. That work that is so super, I don't want to say so supernatural, but I just can't find a word to put for that, that work that has been done, that sets the foundation of everything else that we now know. Where God, a new covenant, somebody say new. I want you to type new, new covenant. And this covenant now is called grace and truth. Come on, just saying that alone. Somebody's here is popping open right now. Grace and truth. You have been resisting, you have been resisting what you have been hearing. But this morning, grace and truth has come to you and it has come to you with the man, Jesus Christ. You cannot go around that. I marvel at how people attack the name of Jesus Christ right across the world. I marvel. I look at it and say that all of the other false religions will mention something and they put him way down there. Some of them call it, oh, he's just a prophet. He's just this. But I'm telling you, we know that he's the son of God. We know that he came and he, he, he did a work and he, he put sin and death to shame. Oh, God Almighty. Wow. Sin and death don't have no power over him because he conquered. He conquered that for us, for you and I. And we can stand in that liberty to know that when we embrace it, we are like him. I'm going ahead of myself. But we're going to go to the fifth thing that we want to see this morning. That the sign of the covenant, their circumcision, where in the natural circumcision took place, where the foreskin of the male genital is removed upon agreement with the terms of the covenant as laid out by God. And I said to you that a covenant is a agreement that that agreement is binding hallelujah thank you jesus father thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you jesus so this covenant which was repeated by isaac and jacob and is confirmed 
are confined rather to the Hebrew people and the 12 tribes of Israel. So that's a covenant that was made between Isaac and Jacob, and God made that with the Hebrew people. They migrated to Egypt. We know that what would have happened to them, there was a time that there was a famine. Hallelujah. A famine, a situation that will allow them to move from where they were. And Joseph, Joseph, who we can look at scripture and see that was sent ahead. But at the time, nobody would have seen that. That the situation that were happening around Joseph was so negative that nobody ever look and say, God was using that to push him to go ahead. There's somebody right now you are going through a storm. You are going through a situation and you're feeling, oh God, I don't see the good in this. And you want to see that. I'm telling you, when you come into God, because all the walking up and down that you're doing and trying to find out what is happening and going to this place and that the place there around this and around this and up there so will not give you peace. When you come to Christ, that's the time you're going to see what all of this meant. What all of this that you're going to mean. Joseph became, he was prime minister of Egypt. And every time we look at this story, if you understand history and see they, the Hebrew people and Egyptians are two different people. Let me just put it simple. They were two different persons. And so God established a Hebrew in another place, in a land that he never born. So there's somebody here, this man, I say, okay, me come from this family, I me come from that the family, and maybe you even you are aware of what God would have said to you, but you're stuck in a place of doubt. We deal with all of these oppositions. We're going to deal with some more, but doubt is one wherein you are doubting God. And you're saying, God, I hear you, but I am from this family. And you're presenting all of these excuses to the Lord, and God is saying, that my word, if you just believe me, if you just trust me, that I will perform this in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody has been delivered. Hallelujah. So they, they migrated to Egypt. And so we see we are in for 430 years. In Egypt, God, you know, looked at the, 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 what was happening there in Egypt. And you saw them were in slavery and they were delivered from slavery through Moses because God changed the dispensation. Yes, Lord, to the dispensation of what is called the dispensation of law. And we're going to look at that word law coming soon and see how this, the operation of law in terms of that which is the law of Christ Jesus now operating the members of those who are born again. But let's look now as we, we, we jettison and, and move a little further from the, this law now into what we are calling about the dispensation of promise. And so to this part now where we are now of the grace and truth, where did this start? This started, this dispensation of great, uh, grace and truth started with Jesus, by Jesus Christ, with the sign of the covenant between God and man, Jesus Christ being the spiritual circumcision of the entire body. Now, watch this. So the, the natural circumcision would have, a sign would have been of the male penis, the foreskin, you know, being, being cut, Away. I want to see all oh, this marvelous. I, I'm, I'm telling you, just looking at this now and even just, 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 just sharing and just going over this week and saying, God, you're awesome. God, you're a God that leaves nothing untouched. Nothing. It's not just a segment. You are saying to us right here that the spiritual circumcision that Jesus Christ did, that through Jesus Christ, uh, that God did with his hands, my entire body? Yes, you heard it right. This circumcision is being described as a spiritual because it was executed by who? God. God himself did it, who is a spiritual being. 
Anybody ever in? I just want us to, to really hear this man, you know. When you are in a situation, you say, only God alone can help me. <laughs> we are saying here, only God alone could do this. That's what we are saying. That's the moment I want us to really look at to see that the spiritual circumcision was done by God. We look, we're in, as we said, the natural circumcision, the sign would have been the Abrahamic covenant, which is the physical act of removing the foreskin from the male genitals after, you know, one agrees with the term of covenant of promise as presented and laid up by God. This was the sign of the covenant in the flesh that God made with Abraham. The covenant itself involved God literally, literally, Revealing himself to Abraham in the cutting away of the, the, the covenant experience described in detail in Genesis chapter 17. I want to look for those who want to go for reference. And we are here, we're not just talking some history and just talking the top of the head, but we want to ask the direct persons to let you have that own experience. You can go this week to ensure that you look at where we are coming from. So, Genesis chapter 17. I want us to go a little deeper today and to look at some questions that may have come in our minds and we may look at right now. You're saying, okay, after we talk about all of those things, what next? Why was there a need for a new or a spiritual circumcision? Because if, you know, that one was operating with Abraham, why was there a need? Because many times persons want to know, you know, why? And so, Although there was some measure of sanctification that resulted, the covenant with Abraham did not. I want us to hear that, you know. I'm going to repeat it. So although there was a measure of sanctification that resulted, the covenant of Abraham did not destroy the spiritual damage done to the human race. Did not. So literal evil spirits of darkness entities such as sin, disobedience, iniquity still needed to be uprooted and evicted from the human body, soul, and spirit. And I know that when I hear that word evicted mean get rid of, thrown out, somebody being evicted from a property. They no longer have rights to the property. They must be move out. And so the spiritual circumcision didn't take place yet. This natural circumcision rather didn't do these things. Never destroy that. Why did it have to be a spiritual work? The captivity. I want to, say, to hear me you now. When somebody is held captive, you know, they are held be, beyond their will. They are held beyond their will. When somebody is a slave, I'm not talking about somebody who agree where we, in the natural terms, sometimes we use these things loosely and to say, you know, I'm a slave upon a job and whatever, you're getting a compensation. I mean, I say, you know, I have no right to it. If you're a slave, you do what the master say and you move accordingly or else. And so the captivity or slavery of mankind to sin, iniquity, and death was spiritual. And so Jesus Christ earned the legal right in a spiritual sense to evict all evil spirits from the human body of any human being who truly wants him to. And who asks him to do so. Jesus Christ is our advocate. Jesus Christ is our liar. And he's not a liar. We are taught without experience. He is the one that has legal authority to do this. This spiritual circumcision. Because he paid the price. The price that was set. Him walk it. He did it. He did that. He conquered sin, death, hell, and the grave without sinning. Yeah? Hallelujah. Aren't you happy for that? 
I'm telling you, if I am in a court case, I want Jesus on the job. So I'm saying right now, you are bound, you are a slave to sin. You need Jesus on the job. Because Jesus is the only one qualified to get rid of whatever is happening to you. And keep you free, keep you out of slavery, out of Satan's prison. Jesus is the only one. I'm saying it again because I want you to hear. You can't hire somebody else. Jesus is the only one. Somebody might tell us if you do something else, you know. But may I tell us, it's not going to work. It might seem like it's not going to work. I mean, I mean, if you are in the legal system and somebody comes to you and says, this is the best lawyer and stuff, you know, we're not promoting any lawyer, so we're not calling name. But you know, certain names in the legal and then call some lawyer and you just say, yes. But if you call one other lawyer and you say, mm -mm. you run me chance with that one. Eh? Expensive, but what I'm saying to you that Jesus paid already. He wants your obedience to him and you are ready. I'm going to take care of the case. I'm going to handle it. And so the presence of the life of Jesus Christ now creates a new law. Somebody say a new law. I want us to look at a new law. A new law in the body called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So there was a law of sin and death that was operating. And now Jesus, wow, come with a new law. A new law called the law of what? The spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want somebody to rejoice right there. Come on, man. Thank God that there's a new law. Thank God that you don't have to stay bound. Thank God that you can be set free. Thank God that you are hearing this right now. If you are here, you hear me at the sound of my voice right now, just say hallelujah. Come on, type hallelujah. Say glory to God because this law is here. This is hope. This is the hope that we are saying to you. That you you are saying, but I, do you mean, I, I can't help myself. But I can't do this. Whatever is happening to me. I'm saying to you that there is hope right now. Trust Jesus. Trust you. Give your life over to him. Let this spiritual law, this new law be operating in you 24-7. So the spiritual circumcision of the flesh refers to the cutting away or removal of the dominating or dominion rather of sin from our bodies, soul, and spirit, so our entire being. It's an operation of God where he, sacrifice, he sanctifies rather and cleanses the flesh, this very bodies. So it's separating it from the power of sin and iniquity. So God has come and Jesus Christ through the spiritual operation cuts away. So the influence of sin no, cut away. We are now governed and influenced under a different law. And so this Circumcision, how it is that the, the, the circumcision was made possible? Because I want us to really see clearly. The circumcision is made possible, or this circumcision rather is made possible through the work of Jesus Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I want us to pull up Colossians 2, 11 to 12. Colossians 2, 11 to 12. Or we can go from verse 9 before, rather. From 9. Let's start with 9. So Colossians 2, 9, and we're going down. So it says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him. Who we are going to be complete in who? In Christ, which is the head of all. All, and I'm saying these words all, all principality and powers, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. When Christ does work, it done. Christ is not a cobbler. And I know those who are in construction will understand what I mean. When somebody comes and does do a little job 
And we're looking at the call back of the people for come and do over the work. When Christ do it, indeed, Christ is the ultimate master professional. When him do it thing, him do it well. Him done, sign and seal, contract done. You don't have to call him back. Yeah? The work is done. And so verse, if we continue, verse 13 says, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had ye quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the unwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross of Jesus took care of business. He is the one that blot out. Blot out means remove, erase, wipe out every ordinance, every decree, everything that against us. When we come in fellowship with him, when we come and the Holy Spirit takes control, he's saying, I am in charge. A new contract operating right here. Hallelujah. But what are some of the effects of this new circumcision? Because we get the new contract. So you have been born again. You are now in Christ. There is something that is operating. And many times again, through how we have been taught, as we will look at Charlie, and ignorance, we just don't know. I know sometimes giving examples like these, and I'm, I'm careful of it, because some persons will hear one thing. But I, I, I can think of us having, you have been given something, a device, and to operate. And you just don't, you, you know it's a good device, but you don't know how to operate this device. You don't even know the full potential of it. I'm telling you, is when I talk to some people who are in the technology, like Romario and so, and they'll be crazy and say, hey, you have a so and so? And they're like, yeah. And they must say, you don't know what's going on with this, you don't know how that works. And we're like, no. <laughs> and so this morning, you may be at this place where you're saying, okay, I hear this now, so I'm circumcised. And how? How this operation will go? Because if you don't know how this operates and how you should be governed and govern under this new law, then some of us through ignorance can walk in a particular way. Some of us may buck up on some persons or we may meet up on some persons who tell us wrong information. And so we start with that now wherein we are operate contrary to what has been established. And so what are the effects? Through the, the circumcision, our flesh becomes the body of Christ and no longer a body of sin. I want to hear this again. Through the spiritual circumcision, the operation of God, our flesh, this flesh, becomes the body of Christ and no longer a body of sin. It allows us to live a holy and blameless life in our body, soul, Spirit until Jesus returns. I want that to soak in. I want that to be like you, you know, have some nice sun, you know, particular cultures they put me to marinate. I want it to marinate. I want to soak in. I want to hear it. Because we have this and and when we don't know the how we operate or we should operate, sometimes we operate below. What we should operate, and that there is a danger. It's dangerous. Jesus, thank you, Father. So we are we are able to operate holy, sanctified, just as Christ operates. We are in fellowship. This body, because the kingdom of God is light, and we always talk about light and the speed of light and all this. This kingdom of God is light, this illumination. And we see it and we know exactly what to do and operate. I'm telling you that there are persons I know, the experiences of God I know, and you know too what, how you operated before. I, I saw a testimony yesterday of a young lady on, the, 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 on Facebook and she was sharing, 
you know, how God transformed her. And she, she unfortunately got into some situations where she went to prison. And it was while in prison that the Lord met her. And she's now out and she's serving the Lord. She's sitting and doing things on CVM all the time. And she's declaring and she said, I know the person I was before. And I know the person I'm now. She's showing clearly that there is a difference. She know the laws and they are governing things that must happen here. And, and as a woman of God, no. As she's walking of a child of God, she's saying that these are the things that I am going to do opposed to what I used to do. And that statement is telling me and telling us this morning that there is a choice. And that's where I want to go to the other choice. And so God has freed us from being slaves to sin, wherein we are just moving about. When you move a slave, you know, then are not choice, you know, friend. When you move a slave, you said, okay, I'm going to move you from here when, when slave was around and, and stuff, and you move somebody and say, I'm carrying you from Montego Bay to St. Catherine. Then are not choice. Let us move. And so many persons, when they govern this love thing, govern their body, then they start moving, they do some sort of money, you ask them what happened, then even, I don't know. I don't know what um, When they come into Christ, Christ has empowered you, that freedom now that you have, he has empowered you, install these laws in your heart. And so you know, can operate freely within the boundaries of the world. And that's what I want to go. Because this freedom is within the bones of Christ. You have to stay there because how are you going to be guided? And so by guiding and by the power of the Holy Spirit, the guarantee, yeah, for you to stay holy and to stay in, 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 in Christ is that he is inside of you, living, and you have to keep on fellowship with him. The decisions that you make, you must talk to the Lord about it. It might look simple. There are decisions that are simple. I need your mind to think it's simple. And if you just consult the Lord, it will keep you out of trouble. And trouble here can mean sin. There are times when people ask you, I was sharing with Darren recently, I was just having a nice you know, time of, of fellowship um, recently. And we we're saying that, you know, sometimes... You are moving and things look good, but it's just not God. And because of the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you, tell the person no. Now, in the logic of it, it no not make no sense because it looks innocent. You can't just go and do something. Right? They just ask you, but the Holy Spirit, who is the one in charge of your life, because this is his temple, you know, a theme body. And he says, I don't want to be there. And I should not be there. You are no tell the person. No. And you obey. And afterwards you realize all of the mess that would have taken place because no, you'd have disobeyed that. I'm saying it could be as simple thing as just going somewhere. I'm saying to somebody this morning that has a decision to make. And it, it yes, it may seem rough, but the Holy Spirit has already convicted you and told you what to do your friends are telling you something else others are telling you something else but you know that the holy ghost has already said no i am saying today be cautious obey god obey god because it will work your while i'm telling you obey the lord and so a few of the th different things that would happen in the spiritual circumstances. A few of the properties of the spiritual circumstances of the body of Christ are these, as I said. One, it results from the crucifixion of the old sinful body that they are now. Christ and Christ have that body. Galatians 5.24, if you can. Galatians 5.24 that says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh, the fallen sinful body of sin, with the affections of lust. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify. I want you to look at that scripture as good. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. We're going to pray right now. We're going to pray for somebody. Somebody, some person, you are here, person's planning to commit murder. You're planning to do some things. I want to tell somebody to stop right now. Father, let us agree. Let us agree right now, saints of God. Come on, let's agree. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Even now, God, that you will meet somebody. God Almighty, like Saul, Father, part of the spiritual circumcision is that our eyes are open to see people. God Almighty, as though you see their destinies and they may be walking and they detend, their intention right now is to kill Shetadaba Sekuda. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ right now. We agree with you, Lord, to say even right now that that person's heart convict them in the heart. No. God, bring up scriptures that their grandmother would have told them, that their mother would have told them. Bring back church services that they would have been in even as children, God. Let there be a conviction. God, I know. I have heard testimonies of those who have been going on their way. They were going to kill. And you allow their eyes to be open and they saw their hands filled with blood and they started to tremble. They started to become, you know, fearful and aware of that there's a God. What would I do? Because their hands were stained with blood. This morning, God Almighty, even if it is somebody who would have tasted of your glory, tasted of your glory, but because of anger, they have opened themselves to anger, to pride, to different things happening to them. And they're deciding, they're plotting, they may not be even the one to carry out the act, but they are sending a message. They are sending a message and sending someone to do the act. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ right now, God, we pray that there'll be a stoppage. We pray that conviction will take place. God, uncover, uncover God, uncover plots of the enemy to destroy somebody's life, to destroy their very lives. God, there's someone that is destined, their destiny inside of you is to be an evangelist, to be a pastor about that mistake. God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for our stopping Lord. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Heavenly Father. As that, 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 that came a while ago, the Lord reminded me, and I'm telling you, sometimes I don't, you know, the, I, 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 I used to wrestle, and I said, used to wrestle with this, that, you know, God is flowing and has shared some stories, and I would like, no, God, may not tell that because people with things or whatever. I remember this opportunity came because I was being attacked in 2004 years ago i was being attacked and somebody was literally killing me on a bus tag killing me and i remember when the opportunity came i heard two voices i heard a voice said kill him i heard a voice said push that knife in because i had the open and i heard the other voice and i know it was the voice of the holy spirit saying no because i see where no god that my life would have gone down a different track i see where the enemy would have come in and I would have been arrested. I would have not have completed my studies. I was in college at a time and I see where the enemy presented that opportunity. But God, your law operating in me, the law of life said no. The law of life said no. Let him go. Let him go. God Almighty, I did not yield to that, that suggestion that the enemy made. There is somebody right now, the enemy is suggesting to you, you have power. You have have the power of Christ in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling somebody this happened to me. Did that person stop? They didn't stop. They kept on coming. But the Lord made a way of escape for me. God made a way of escape and I escaped with my life. And I'm here sitting today talking to you many years after. I wouldn't have met Pastor Andrew, I wouldn't have met Pastor Danit, I wouldn't have met so many persons that I, I am meeting and operating right now. There's a young person, there's a young girl, a young boy, who you, your decision, you have decided in your heart, even though you would have heard this, that you are going to do something. I'm telling you today, stop. There is a warning in this message right now. I just feel the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit to tell somebody to stop. I just hear it. I'm seeing that stop sign lit 
literally to say to somebody, stop. Come on, somebody type stop. Somebody type stop right now. Somebody's destiny is about to derail, be derailed. Holy Father God. And you are saying right now, Holy Ghost, you are tabernacling right here. Right here with this person to say, I have already set you free. Do not go there. Don't go there. Don't put on the Bible and go cost them. Come on now. Those are lies of the enemy. Those are lies of the you are a uh, you are an ambassador of peace. You are a reconciler. Yes, he was a cost bad word. He was a cost them out. But no, God is saying you have a new life. Come on, operate in that new life. Yes, they must say they are gonna say that you are a fool. They are gonna say that you are weak. But right now, Lord God, I pray in strength for somebody right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, someone that is this feeling weak right now that need to hear you. That God, um, yes, they are wicked. They are evil, but God Almighty, you said to let it go. And I am going to obey you. I'm, I'm here this morning. I'm saying, stop. 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 You are about to run with a message of lie. Because sometimes we think that murder is only when the person, you know, you cut somebody and blood coming out. But you are going to murder somebody's career. You are going to murder. You are going with a file of lies to give over to murder somebody's career. Yes, the person has done you wrong. You are going out to say, I'm going to tear this down. I'm going to bring down that company because they have hurt me. I am saying this morning that the Lord is here today and he's saying to you, stop. Hallelujah. Because that very act that you're going to do is going to ricochet. It's going to come back a way that you were never seen. You never saw it. God is saying, choose peace. Choose peace. Choose peace today. Choose peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the very, in this new circumcision, it is a very, it's very Christ. It's Paul was very Christ a few days after his transformation. So we are saying that Saul was confounded by the Jews which, you know, dwelt at Damascus and proving that this is very Christ. Acts 9.22. Acts 9.22, we can pull that up. His proof, no doubt, was based on the scriptures and also the testimony of his own new body and life. So Paul experienced that. Paul was a murderer. I'm telling you guys, Paul was a murderer. Paul was a killer. In Jamaica, they say, my killy, killy. The young men will say, killy, killy, killer. I saw something this week that my heart was crying. I saw some young children, some children in a primary school. And the song was being played. And them start to talk about them a murderer and them a this. And they were playing and adults were there. And jumping, and these children were taking on that. And I'm saying, God, what does that mean in our nation? I saw in another school where they carried a particular artist. I don't know what time of the day it was, but this artist was telling them they were mad somebody and they were this and whatever. And they were, they were they just speaking these acts of death upon our children. And so, Lord, even this morning, Lord, let there be a soul, a one going out with a message today. I saw also. So this week that there's a, there's, a, there's a singer, a very popular singer that sings a particular song. I don't remember the song now, but I heard that he cut his, 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 his thing short. He had a tour, big tour across the world, and he said he's going to follow Christ. The article wrote it in such a way as if he was going to die. Is <laughs> this. But you know already how the world will put things. They are seeing it, but he's saying, I am done. The tour, he didn't even say, I'm done to finish the tour. He said, I'm done here. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to follow Christ. And he had the biggest thing in his career right now. Somebody, you are at that point where you're thinking that you are the biggest part of your career. You are the biggest thing since sliced bread. And Jesus Christ has come to you this morning, this day, and you have heard me. And you know that the law that you're operating on is the wrong law. It's not taking you to heaven. It's not taking you nowhere. You would have grown up in the church. Some of you, 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 you testify in the world that you grew up on the choir. You're saying it nice. As if it is somewhere to graduate from. You are to graduate in the Lord. Inside of Christ. And so I'm saying you to drop that thing right now. So Paul could 
testify of this new thing. The body, this new body is the property of and belongs exclusively to the kingdom of light. Somebody said the kingdom of light. The kingdom of light. After the resurrection of Jesus, the bodies of many righteous saints who died in the faith got up out of the grave and did not release fear in Jerusalem. And Pastor Andrew touched on that last week. There was no fear in that. Rather, in the appearance to many in Jerusalem, he inspired hope. In the living that the promise who will see a general body resurrection from the dead in the scriptures of the righteous and of the wicked from the dead is truly going to happen. It's going to happen. The experience provided a preview. I well, you know a preview, one little thing to come, you know, show a little piece of what the big movie is going to be about. A preview and was the precursor to the general resurrection of our righteous dead, to the joyful, um, re their re joyful re their reward. I want to say right now, as we just wrap this morning, we have touched on a few things of the hindrances and what will stop the flow of us walking in this new circumcision. But I want to bring up the scripture before I do that. Matthew 27, verse 52 to 53 says, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. I like how the scripture put it. Falling asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so we touch on one that falls are healthy teachings, biblical views, misquoted and misrepresented can allow people to not fully see and walk into the circumcision. Statements like saying, yeah, me not have to be them friend, me not have to talk to them, but me good. Kind of thing where we keep malice. And it's a subtle way. So we don't really, you know, we, we can even avoid people, you know. And we think so we somehow work out in a way that I'm not malice and I really malice for true. That's true because we not talk to them, we not share. And one of the things with technology nowadays, you know, we have, I, again, these terms that may come up with the technological malice, where we know say, certain things and if we, we click on certain, some of their name come up, you don't say, oh, that one there? Nah, I said nothing good here. <laughs> you stay there, work on that. Repent. Repent. I'm telling you. That person needs the gospel just as all anybody else that you're sending that forward to or that message to. Yeah? If you're feeling that book in your heart about that person, I'm saying to you, talk to the Lord about that. Repent and then do what is right. Yeah? So don't hold any malice, any, any grudge against anybody. Malice, grudge, lustful behaviors can also lead to distraction. Lustful behaviors can lead to distraction. And this is where I want to segue here to say to somebody that you are going for the Lord. You're happy. You are expressing all of the virtue of the kingdom. Joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. Them not appear right. Them not do this good to you. And you go. And you go. And one distraction come. Boom. Somebody come and say to you, say, stop bridging. Oh, you yeah, work so long. I not drive. Holy Father, why oh, you work so long? And you know, they are this opposition. Oh, you know, so you're better than so and so. And you start now to look at all of these things and get distracted and lose your momentum, lose that pep in your step, lose that. Thing. You know, when you're in the zone, anybody know that thing when you're in the zone and you're going? Have you ever seen persons, ministry, ministers moving, moving in law, not nobody you. You just have move, you just have moving God, and then you go stop and go gears. You go stop and go gears. Are you stop and take a ear? Put your ears to the wrong somebody if you say wrong thing and just say, yeah, maybe consider. Do not consider. Consider what God says. Smile, moving on in the Lord. And even show that person too. Why is it that you are enjoying this peace? 
Because there are people who are designed, and I'm telling you, saints of God, beware. There are people who are designed, who are not happy that I see you in the peace, you enjoying the, the Lord, and they come and say, they are going to mess you up and take you out of that peace. And I'm saying to you, you have the choice. Stay in the peace of God. Stay in the peace of God. Stay in the peace of God with your one shoes. Stay in the peace of God with your one suit. And your, your wash out pants. And your wash out skirt. And continue doing the work that you should do. Don't thief nobody something. Leave it alone. Because God, the righteous judge, who is inside of you, Jesus Christ, is testifying to them. That see there, you can make it. So don't let anything distract you. Don't let any, the fear, as I said before, fear, I grew up that way. Where I looked on it until I got the truth of God. Until I encountered real men of God who were walking. And I must say, you know, honor to, and I always do. And, and I'm, I'm glad for my pastors who, you know, they always encourage us that, yes, Honor those who have served and, and dedicated their life to you. And many pastors have done that. People like, you know, the late Bishop Adigold, people like Pastor Herbert McLean, Ben McLean, and Bernard Deslandes. And there's so many pastors that call in some names that get myself in trouble. But I'm telling you, there are people who would have shown me that, hey, you're afraid. No care, no fear. Because fear is that. That opening that the enemy wants you to stay in. And so fear there are persons here this morning that you would have been taught some things that they might carry your name up and so and carry your name and say you, you are trapped in fear. Stand in the liberties of Christ to say that I'm now in Christ. I operate in a different law. Come on now and stay righteous. Father, we thank you for this morning. Come on, let's pray. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. That, Lord God, you have called us into the circumcision, the spiritual circumcision. You have set us free. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ that you have made us free, that we are born again. That, Father, when we are born again, Lord God Almighty, know our bodies pray for holiness. This morning, Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that as we continue to walk inside of you, God will not be distracted. We will not go off, Lord God, everything that is trying to operate. God will not go into, as Uncle Andrew said last week, mysticism and going into different things and practices in the culture. But Father God, we will stick to you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord God, that our bodies have been circumcised and quickened and made alive unto God. That, Lord, we can be presented blameless. Hallelujah. Blameless until the day of the Lord. If we choose to walk in in obedience to the spirit of God that is in us. We thank God that our salvation, Lord, you have made us new. That indeed the salvation, you installed the law of the spirit of life in our bodies. When you raised up Christ with us, Lord, thank you, Jesus. You raised us up with Christ. As, as with Jesus, we, Lord God, operate under a new, new, this new law masters our bodies. This new law masters our bodies. This leave no room for the law of sin and death to operate in us, Lord. We thank you, God, that our souls, our souls can now choose to live, to live with you, to, to not take our bodies into sin, to refuse, Lord God Almighty, to, 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 to listen to doctrines that we will not suffer with Christ, but to embrace the truth of God that will preserve us. We thank you, many Father, Lord God Almighty, for scriptures, Lord God, like Romans 8 verse 2 for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. We thank you Heavenly Father for scripture like Colossians 2 10 to 11 and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power in him also ye were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of sin of the flesh by circumcision 
circumcision of Christ. Father, we bless you, Lord. We thank you, many Father, that the, the apostle would have written to even those, Lord God, in Acts, Lord God, the Acts of the Apostle says in 15, Acts 15, 23 to 24, and they wrote letters to them after this manner, the apostles and the elders and the brethren, and they greeted unto the brethren which were our Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia, for as much as we have heard, thank you God that we have heard you, that certain, certain which went out from among us have troubled you with words, some people troubling some things, subverting your soul, saying you must be circumcised after to keep the law to whom you gave no such commandment. Father, we thank you, God, for somebody hearing you, that the Spirit of God is just standing strong in somebody this morning to say that they are, you have, have done a work in their life. And so every other thing to persons that, that have been sent around to, to get them distracted, to get them out of the way, to, 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 to seduce them, to bring them into a place of condemnation, a place that you have taken taking them out of, to take them back to that place. God, we say, God, that the light perpetual will keep on growing and they will continue to grow in grace and they will continue to grow in grace, God. Yes, Lord, they are they are crying out for that 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 birth, new birth, that, that great bang that happened at the new, when they just got saved. But God, you are showing them today that you will keep on growing. And as they mature, they will move from milk to bone to meat and the different things and cracking some bones and, you know, chewing some meat in the word, God Almighty. We thank you, God, for growth irrespective of where we are physically. That, Lord God Almighty, your presence is with us. And so we bless you this morning. We thank you. We rejoice in you, Lord God Almighty. Come on, somebody just say hallelujah. Just say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We rejoice in you that indeed the spiritual law in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, has made us free from the law of sin and death. And as we continue to operate in you, even Heavenly Father, we love those who curse us. We love those who try to persecute us and to even those who persecute us. We love those because we are continuing the mission. We are continuing the mission with you. will not be stopped. We will not be silent. The song said we will not be silent. And so far, we will not be hindered by anything else. No thing of frustration, no thing, Lord, of offense will hinder us from reaching those. We will put on the whole armor of God, the very armor of God that you have given us. And we will walk and we will work with you to rescue the lost. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.